All right, all right, all right. Hey, YouTube, I'm Lucky, and in today's video, I'm going to bring you the top 10 meta weapons to use when doing the Vow of the Disciple raid. Now, I did make a video talking about these are the weapons I would recommend bringing into the raid before the raid came out, but now at this point in time, I've completed the raid. I've done almost 20 clears at this point in time. We've done a ton of carries on the live stream. We finished it day one. We got Worlds 36 overall, which was pretty impressive. We're happy about that. And now I can confidently bring you the top 10 best weapons to clear every single encounter. And if you don't have all these weapons, don't feel bad. What you can do is use a variation or a mix and match of some of these weapons. Or what you can do is take this time to go out and grind for some of these weapons, these exotics, these god rolls, whatever it may be, because some of these make doing these encounters so, so, so easy. Starting from the very top, we're going to talk about the Izanagi's Burden. This exotic is just nuts, and the damage output from Izzy plus an auto-loading uh, lasting impression rocket is insane. This is what we were using to one-phase Rolk. It's very efficient, and you can obviously you can shoot the sniper shot, you shoot the rocket, you swap back to the sniper, reload it, and then the rocket reloads itself because of auto loading. It's a really nice combination, and the it's probably the best burst DPS you can do in the game right now. So Izzy plus auto loading rocket is definitely worth it. Moving on to the next one, and this list is going to be a little bit more than ten here, but a few of these are just fillers, so keep that in mind. Izzy is definitely in the top ten. The Osteo is, is a maybe, right? The Osteo is not an absolute necessity when doing this raid, but the ad clear potential from this is nuts. I mean, you you hit one ad, it poisons all the other ads, and it just keeps spreading, so on and so forth. If you're ever struggling in any area or any encounter at all, trust me, put on the Osteo, for ad clear at least, put on the Osteo. This thing is absolutely nuts. When you're doing the symbols and you have to do the three different relics uh, encounter just before the boss, this is one of the best exotics to put on to clear those ads because it will just poison everything. It's a tight little room with tons of ads spawning over and over again, and it will just poison things over and over and over again. It's so, so strong. Osteo, I can't say enough about how good this exotic is. Now, I do have the succession in here, and the reason why is because sometimes I'm rocking Galhorn, so that way my my friends can get Wolfpack rounds on their legendary rockets. And so that's my, my swap-off weapon, and the succession with Reconstruction Borple is obviously really, really good and definitely... Uh, a strong weapon have but obviously rng you know deep stone crypt you got to turn in those raids well let's see if you get that one so the izzy is a must have the succession or just a really good kinetic sniper there's a bunch of them that are really good it doesn't have to be the succession but the succession is probably the best legendary uh sniper in slot moving on to the next one the wither horde again for ad clear is so nice uh, especially with catalyst you shoot it you swap to a different weapon and you begin to clear ads. Again, there's a few encounters in this raid where you just want to strictly focus on clearing ads, or maybe even if you are in a dead encounter where there is a boss and you need to focus more on clearing ads, that's your role that you're playing. Uh, Wither Horde is always a great option, something that I regularly see myself using. And the one that actually surprised me was Outbreak Perfected. So when you're actually shooting the uh, caretaker, caregiver rather, uh, this, this exotic is really, really good if you run out of ammo. If I'm using, uh, for example, the Izanagi's Burden and the Rocket, and I shoot all my special ammo and shoot all my rockets, you can just swap to the Outbreak Perfected, and you can just shoot this with your entire team. It does really, really good primary ammo damage, especially if you have multiple teammates using this. It stacks together really well, and so I would highly recommend having Outbreak Perfected for that. You could beat the entire uh, Caretaker encounter, with just the Outbreak Perfected if you had all six people using it because the damage is that good, so keep that in mind. And one thing that I will also throw in there is that I really like using a Slug Shotgun. They were nerfed, but they're still extremely strong. Uh, oftentimes, if I'm trying to take out Majors, hitting them with a Slug is really nice. It'll either flinch them or just one-hit kill them, so I found myself regularly using the Slug Shotgun. I don't believe this is the God of the Heritage, but this is just a really good role I have. I really like the perk reconstruction on... Uh, any weapon, if I can be completely honest, I think Reconstruction is probably my favorite PvE perk overall. Feel free to comment down below what your favorite PvE perk is. Moving on to the next slot, we're going to talk about the Gnawing Hunger. Now, a lot of people this season are talking about the Recluse 2.0, the Funnel Web, so on and so forth, but I'm talking about the Gnawing Hunger. The Gnawing Hunger is awesome. It has all the void potential of the Funnel Web, but it has better range because it's an auto rifle, it's a 600 RPM, and I was absolutely loving mowing down ads with subsistence and rampage with this thing especially during contest it did the same but after contest when we got a little more powerful and we're above the power delta a little further wow i mean the potential is insane i'm just absolutely clearing ads and i don't even have to reload because it has subsistence and rampage on it just getting those stacks times three so easily i love this non hunger it's very good I would say that having a funnel web is almost a must have for the raid, but if you have a Nong Hunger sitting in there from Season of Arrivals, definitely pull that bad boy out. It doesn't have to be this exact role. Any Nong Hunger role is really good and works really well with Void 3.0 builds. Conversely, if you don't have the Nong Hunger, you could also use 
um, the Reckless Oracle here. This word has the same potential. It's an auto rifle. It fires a little faster. It's a 720 instead of a 600. So that could actually work in your favors, depending upon which type of auto rifles you like more. But overall, an auto rifle for Void 3.0 builds instead of an SMG, I found to be really, really good. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because the Nicholas SMG is technically bugged, but it literally does exotic uh, weapon damage. So if you're trying to beat the raid right now, I mean, quite literally, the Nicholas SMG is like bugged and doing crazy damage, but I don't want to talk about that too much. Next up, we're talking about the Palindrome. Now, this was just a weapon that I threw on for stopping do the Unstoppables. And it's not the best for ad clear, but obviously you need unstoppable hand cannon due to the seasonal mods that are available this season. And so the palindrome worked really well for void 3.0 builds. So that way I could still do a variety of different like volatile rounds and stuff like that. So I threw the palindrome in this list, but it's by no means some crazy ad clear weapon. Even with this really good overflow one for all roll, it's still not that great. I would genuinely choose the gnawing hunger over the palindrome every time, unless I had to. Uh, fight an unstoppable champion, which I, you know, I would put on the palindrome to stop them. Next up, we'll talk about the divinity. Of course, I mean, what can I say about the divinity? Uh, it it debuffs enemies. It creates that really big crit. It's really nice for so many counters. Probably my favorite to use when fighting Rolk because he's teleporting around. He can be kind of hard to hit, but you put a div bubble on him. He has a giant crit, and you can consistently hit him in his crit spot and do a lot more damage. So divinity, of course, a really good option. Moving on to the power weapon slot, we have this Palmyra B that you can craft from the Enclave. I would highly recommend to get one of these and level it up. Uh, you can go to the Shurichi checkpoint and just place raid banners and just keep shooting the enemies over and over and over again until you've leveled yours up high enough to get auto-loading and lasting impression. That is going to be the best role that pairs with the Wolfpack Rounds perk right there. I know a lot of people talking about Explosive Light, and there may be some potential for that to be better in certain scenarios, but... Overall, I believe the best boss DPS is auto-loading lasting impression. I will do some tests, though, to make sure that that's accurate. But either way, one or the other is really, really good. And this is definitely worth crafting and putting in the time to grind out for because this is insanely good DPS and it has tracking on it. So it's so nice. It's such a good rocket. Definitely worth your time. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one again because it's bugged right now. It's doing bug damage. But obviously, if you wanted to use some bugged weapons, literally the Worklift does insane damage right now. Uh, the Gallahorn what can i even say about this as well right this is just such a good staple exotic uh, rocket launcher of the game amazing damage output amazing ad clear you don't need a ton of these on your team though it's better to have a ton of legendary rocket people and then just one of these giving everyone pack hunter but i would recommend at least having one person on your team with galhorn if anyone's using rockets and to synergize your team together so have like one galhorn person and then five rockets or one galhorn person one div person and four rockets etc next up and my favorite weapon by far, the Reed's Regret. This thing is so good. This is easily the winner of uh, the entirety of the raid. This thing's damage output is unbelievable. It has crazy ammunition. So you're just always pumping ammo into enemies, into bosses, etc. It has way more ammo than your you know, your normal rocket. It, rockets can do a little bit better burst DPS, but the Reed's Regret just has so much ammo that you can just sit there and do such crazy sustained DPS. Highly recommend to get the Reed's Regret. If you don't already have one, you should probably do, but if you don't already have one, Trials is coming back this Friday. Definitely snag one of these bad boys. Triple tab firing line is nuts. And the new Linear Fusion that's come out is actually really, really good. If you get the God Roll, you could farm for the new one from the Valid Disciple, but I do think the Reed's Regret has a little bit of an edge on it because firing line is just a consistent 25% damage buff. Moving on to the next one, we're going to talk about the Tractor Cannon. Not something that I used that often, but there was a couple encounters where you're just trying to mow through ads really fast and tractoring them, you know, suppresses them and pushes them and kills them out of the way pretty fast and efficiently. If you're just trying to run through an encounter really fast and efficiently, tractor ended up being uh, pretty effective and fun to use through a few encounters. And the same thing with the sword. The sword has Eager's Edge on it, so we ended up using that to, you know, just fly from one encounter to another, do the jumping puzzles. If you're about to fall off the edge, you swap to the sword, turn around, and you can fly back onto the platform. So an Eager Edge sword worked out really well for jumping puzzles, but... Those are overall are going to be my quote unquote top 10 picks. I know I picked a lot more than top 10 overall, but those are the, definitely the best and strongest meta weapons. If you felt like I left anything out of this list, please comment it down below because I spent a lot of time making sure that I got every single weapon included in here. Obviously, there's a bunch of other good weapons you could use. You could use, you know, an energy void pulse rifle for uh, unstoppable champions instead of the pound drum. But overall, I think the pound drum is a little bit better. Um, ad clear and better for those unstoppables but teach throne you know there's a little bit of opinion that goes into this but overall i do think that if you have some of these weapons you will have a very easy time going through the raid and let me know your thoughts on the new raid the vow of the disciple in the comments below 
that's a wrap on this video. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed. Smash the like button. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Later.